Why Vampire Never Die, Guillermo del Toro and Chuck Hogan. About the author. Born in Guadalajara, Mexico in 1964, Guillermo del Toro is writer, producer and director best known for films like Supernatural Thriller, Pants Labert 2006 and the Hellboy superhero series. In 2009, Del Toro published his first novel, The Strain, co-written with Chuck Hogan. This book is the first in a vampire trilogy by two authors. Chuck Hogan is a crime fiction and horror novelist whose books include The Blood Artist, Prince of Thieves, and The Killing Moon. Background on Vampire Movies As generations of filmmakers have reinvented the Dracula myth on screen, movie vampires have ranged from the handsome and romantic to the grotesque and even comical. The most famous early de depiction was German director F. W. Moore nouns influential and experimentistic. Nosferatu, 1922, in which actor Max Serek played a repulsive, toothy, and rat like version of the creature. With actors Bela Lugosi in Dracula 1931 and Christopher Lee in The Horror of Dracula 1958, the vampire became a more romantic figure. In the years since, the character have proven a very versatile featured in films like Dracula and clampy comedy horror movies as Fright Night as well as director Francis Freud's Dracula 1992, a faithful adaptation of Bram Stoker's original novel. More recently, the television show Bluffy, The Vampire Slayer 1977-19-2002, The Twilight Book and Movie Series and HBO's True Blood have reaffirmed the enduring appearances of vampires. Summary in English In Why Vampire Never Dies, Guillermo del Toro and Chuck Hogan discusses the timeless fascination vampires continue to hold for today's society. The authors explain how the myth of vampire is still living. The vampires are considered either the romantic heroes or the undead monsters. People today may find it interesting that vampires have capability to live forever. Over time, vampires have become a huge part of teenage fictional literature which leads into bigger box office productions. The ways the vampires are portrayed are through appealing looks and charm, key factor that draws us to them. Another is the immortality, the desire to be young and perfect forever. Vampires, no matter how appealing they are, they are still highly dangerous. It's always either a romantic or a terror with the vampire creatures. The causes they provide are very supportive of the argument because they give example of reasons why vampires are popular today. The authors talk about how monsters provide the possibility of mystery always. In the late 18s, when Dracula became popular, they were in technical revolution where blood transfusions, new gadgets, and more communication were becoming popular as well. Having these new items happening made Dracula that much more interesting for that generation and made it stick to popular culture. Since 
it was popular for those generations, people decided to keep updating with the new gadgets of each generation. Vampires are here to last for a very long time to come. And they will keep updating as long as authors and movie makers keep having ideas to what is the new hot thing. The title suggests they never die, but what they are actually referring to is the idea or thought of vampires never dies in minds of humans. We agree with the author's idea that vampires have always caught the attention of people throughout human evolutionary history. The author has used plenty of facts and evidences to help back up their argument. The author argues long before we became agricultural tribes, we may have participated in cannibalistic actions. Also, he traces the vampires that existed all the way back to Babylonian times that helps to show how vampire, how long vampires have been talked about. Lastly, the author claims monster will always provide the possibility of mystery in our mundane reality, so lives, hinting at larger spiritual world which goes to show how the unknown are here are always in the back of our mind. Comprehension Questions What is the modern day epidemic to which the writers refer in the paragraph 1? It, in what sense is this an epidemic? The epidemic the writers are referring to is the popularity of vampires in entertainment media. It is considered an epidemic in the vampires' popularity was widespread and rapid over a particular period of time. Who are the two monsters of the modern age? What two branches of vampire friction do the writer identify? Answer. One of the monster was Mary Silly's Frankenstein and other was John, William, John Williams' vampire. The authors write that two main types of vampire fiction include the vampire as romantic hero and the vampire as undead monster. Question number three. What are the origins of the vampire? Vampires existed before we call them vampires. The myth of vampire has existed in many different cultures since ancient times. The author speculate that the idea could have come from humans' roots as primates, that at one point our species was cannibalistic, as that idea of our ancestor as primitive beast led to this mythology. Why is that vampires will never die? Answer: Because of the mystery that vampires bring to our lives and the way they are able to be imagined in continually evolving ways alongside our changing technology, they will remain a part of our culture indefinitely. Next question. How is the world we live in today like the world at that time Dracula was published? How does this kind of world encourage the prolification of vampires in popular cultures? Action. Answer. Since Dracula's publication, there has been an enormous amount of scientific innovation the authors focused on our increased access to information and our ability to feel connected at all. Because we are able to learn about most anything we want, the mystery that vampires provide is appealing to us. Journal Entry Do you see the tremendous recent popularity of vampires as a positive or negative development? Why? Answer. The recent popularity of vampires, while perhaps a, a bit tiresome to some, it is ultimately a positive thing. It is fascinating to see 
all the varying iterations on the concept that different writers and artists come up with. As Del Toro and Hogan pointed out in their essay, constantly changing technology is always providing new lenses through which to think about the vampire. There are endless ways to take new ideas to create a contemporary spin on the vampire narrative, though there are certain to be both hits and misses. The creative potential is quite exciting. Combining the patterns In paragraph 13 and 14, the writers use comparison and contrast. What are they comparing? How does this comparison support their ideas? In paragraph 13, the authors are comparing the technology of 1890s with the technology that was prominent in previous creative iterations of the vampire. The ancient myth of the vampire is being contrasted with the time's modern technology. In paragraph 14, the emphasis is given. Again, the author talks about our new technology. This time, however, they are comparing our ability to feel connected to the world with our ability to know ourselves.